Got my notification. Did you? Yep. Woo woo. Justin's live. <clears throat> Go to the Rand. The Twinkies got the same hats on. Oh, we got six people finally. What's up, Todd Jones? Or is that John's? <laughs> oh, man. 14. How's it going, everybody? Cody, Christopher, almost means Nazi. What's up, brother? Saw you on uh, um, SV Seekers last vid. Hello from the UK, Greg. No, oh, oh. <laughs> it says almost means not good. And it looked like you said not good because I said, how's it going? <laughs> uh cody 3232 strip bear so what shop talk are we going to talk about jason asks well we're going to talk about uh, my shop build and how it's going so far today steven and i put up the last bolts holding the actual structure together so it's been pretty um warm during the day it hasn't been that it's been hot it's just been there's been a lot of sun come here there's been about that much sun out there so we've been trying to come in at about noon you wear one sports bra on one freaking job, and he's got to show the strap marks to everybody. Yeah, well, you know, at least your boobs are firm now. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got the, um, you know, we've been working during the morning and then coming back and working at night and leaving that middle part because around the shop, I specifically set it up, cleared all the trees for solar, and um, should be pretty cool um, once we get her up and running, we get the solar panels on and everything. But that's going to be like a year down the road. But when we're out there, man, just the sun is beating down on us like crazy. And, you know, it's it's the beginning of that summer season and uh, tends to be a little bit rough. So, anyway, audio sound good? It tends to be a little bit rough. So. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, anyway, uh, let's see. We got any other questions? Been having a lot of rain. Yeah, we, we finally – so the shop build here was put off for – Two and a half months. Uh, it's been so long that I finally just had to go get my. What's um, um, a living? Why are you not a moderator? Parker got a little sunburn too. Lewis Schwegman. Add moderator. Money. Lewis. Oh man, that's awesome. That's Thanks, fantastic. Uh, guys, I just made one ten living a moderator. He's been out here helping us out as well. Uh, there's forty seven guys in the in, in the spot right now. Pull up. Uh, pull up one ten living. And go sub to his channel. He's going to be putting out mm. some videos as well as the shop build. And also uh, Gary from 42 Fab. Oh, sorry, uh, Gary from uh, Tools for Machines. And um, uh, he'll be out there as well. JK Canvas, what's up, brother? So, JK, I'm pretty much working. He was talking about coming down. We're pretty much building the shop the entire, um, the entire, uh, well, for probably for the next month or so. So, anytime you want to come down, help out, that'd be great. So, I'm actually leaving this afternoon, and there's going to be a bunch of sheeting to left to do. So yeah. this weekend, it would be a fantastic time to come help Justin put all the sheeting up. Yeah. I'm not going to be available. It's a lot of sheeting, too. I mean, we got to skin the entire outside. The thing is, is I don't want to be up there on the top of that roof by myself. Something happens to me. Roof. I fall down. Roof. Sorry. That's I don't want to be roof. on the roof. Roof. Um, by myself, I could fall off and then just be laying there, you know, with no help. So. Uh, we'll try, you know, we're trying to be safe and everything, but uh, the bottom line is it's, there's, it's, it can be dangerous. So old school repair shop. What's up, brother? How much did it cost so far? The shop? Uh, five grand for the slab. And that is a uh, 1200 foot slab with a run up. And the run up is a 20 by 12 foot wide run up. So it has a driveway and eventually I'm going to put an awning over that. So that'll be covered as well. It'll be a good spot to park the tractor or work on any vehicles. And um, then the shop itself from Mueller, the steel building, was eleven grand, and um, just been years in the making of saving that money. We actually put the shop in a year or the slab in a year and a half ago, so it just shows you how long it's taken to get to this point. So um, we're pretty close though to getting the actual building erected, and then it's. Um, I think what I'm going to do is try to make it as comfortable as possible. I'm going to go ahead and install my Mr. Cool air conditioner in there right away. And then uh, run my generator to the Mr. Cool. And then I can uh, do all of my um, electrical wiring via uh, inside of an air-conditioned building. I think that'll be really nice. Hey, Lewis, Absolutely. thanks again, brother, for that 20-buck uh, super chat, man. I really appreciate that. The shop is a 30-foot by 40-foot with a 14-foot center pipe. Yeah. 12-foot on the outside. And it's a lot taller than I thought it would be. I mean, there's so much room in there. 
So one wall, I've kind of decided I want to make one wall storage. And I think I want to put in like a library style ladder that just rolls on a track back and forth. And um, I think that would be really neat. It'll allow me to get all the way up to the shelves that are at the top easily. And um, that should be pretty cool. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. That may be something that, that happens or not. So, um, yeah, man, shop. It's 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 going to be nice. But we have we have two 20 foot trailers in the back of the property right now full of my tools. And I've got at least one more trailer load at the museum that I've got to go get. And um, it's getting ready to rain, too. So I've got to get some uh, CRC SP 400 and coat those bad boys, coat all the tools that are out there to protect them. And then we're going to tarp them. So they should be fine. I don't think it'll be much of an issue. If you guys haven't got over to Amazon and got SP400 for your rust proofing, you need to go get some because it's really, really good stuff. And um, I'll make a video about that here probably in a little bit and um, just get that up. So 20 by 20. Hey, uh, old school Steven was talking about something. Talk about that again, uh, the 20 by 20. He says he's got a 20 by 20 shop. Uh... Steven was talking about just uh, – we were looking at the shop sitting out there, and he's like, man, you know, oh, yeah. it's uh, it's really awesome that you have this. If you're ever feeling down about something, you can always come out and just sit by your shop and look at it. Regardless of if, if it's a, a 30 by 40 or a 20 by 20, there are a lot of guys out there that don't have that, man. They don't have anywhere to put their tools. They don't have um, – it, it, for the past three months, I haven't had a shop. And, it, you know, it's really painful for someone who's used to working in a shop. Um, to not have access to that. So just, you know, take take a look and go tell your shop thank you for, for being a 20 by 20. It's, yeah, it's, real, it's good. It's real easy for people to fall into like the, or we were making a video and my point was it's human nature to kind of start getting down on yourself and like focusing on what you don't have. Guys with a smaller shop, like, you know, some guys wrote me, he's like, hey, I only have a five foot by five foot space to work in. It's not much of a shop. Yeah. I was like, man, you know how many guys sit back and they just, they cannot... Um, uh, they don't have the ability, they don't have the space, they don't have the finances, they don't have the place to build any shop at all, and they dream of having any place at all to be able to work on. And so even if it's a 5x5, five five, a 10x10, 10 10, or a 30x40, or whatever you got, I mean, sit back and look at that and realize that there's a, a lot of the population that does, is not that fortunate as you or you have been Regardless of what the situation of the shop is, it doesn't matter if it's on somebody else's property. Doesn't matter if it you're renting it. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, a barn that you're just working out of. I mean, uh, just the the space, you know, to keep your stuff safe and to be able to work on it is an incredible achievement. And you know, and as far as like guys like us, blue collar guys, I mean, that's an incredible achievement in life is to be able to have a space like that. And it doesn't matter the size. Yeah, we all, you know, we want to. 100 you know 100 by 150 with three stories and seven lifts inside and all that yeah a little apartment for your friends <clears throat> you know and, and all that stuff would be great but just because you don't have that you know your shop is a you know like a lot of guys like well mine's only a 20 by 20 it's like man it's just the fact that you have a space even just a garage you know a, a single car two car garage in your house where you can open the door and work you know is incredible and that's you're so much more fortunate than a lot of guys out there yeah it's uh I feel blessed, man. And, you know, it's killing me that I'm having to take this time to put it up. I just want the shop up and I want my tools in it. Like, I'm just, that's, that's all I want. I want it done. So we'll get there. We'll get there. I've got, uh, I got nothing else to do but come out here and work on the shop every single day. So any of you guys that are close um, and want to come out and give a hand, not a problem, man. It's uh, the good of the land 22 at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'll get a hold of you. And you guys can come out and help us throw some stuff up. We've got electrical wiring to do. We're not putting a lift inside the shop. Uh, any of you watch Andrew Camarada, he has a really, really cool setup where he's got his shop inside, but his lift is outside on a slab in between two Connex boxes, and he's got a roof over it. Freaking brilliant design. So we're going to do that. So I'll have two Connex boxes for storage, and then um, you know, you can, one of them will be for stuff that I never really use. The other will be for all the tools that get used but are probably for the, for the property. So... Your weed whackers, your chainsaws, all that stuff can be stored in there on some nice shelves. And then I can go into there, I can get whatever I need, pull the lawnmower out, and, um... Oh, Dr. Lee, what's hey, up, man? Hey, hey, baby. Sorry, guys, Amy trumps all live streams. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, Dr. Lee is out on the ranch, is on. Dr. Lee, what's up? We're live right now. Yeah, I like your message, Dr. Lee. That's perfect. How you feeling, baby? Amy's a little sick, guys. 
Oh, really? For those of you that don't know, because I haven't put the video up. Okay, well, uh, I'll I call just, you back. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? I just went down to uh, uh, Dr. Lee's down to Demolition right, I love you, baby. And uh, purchased Mark Carricker's Dodge Ram. And I uh, got to meet up with Dr. Lee again and Mark. And um, uh, my boys got to ride and drive the cancer cart. That video was awesome. I saw that on uh, – uh, did you shoot a video for that? I shot a video. I haven't okay. edited it yet. I all haven't right. been back home. So all you guys have been writing me. Christ centered. What's up, brother? Ask me, you know, I was like, hey, um, uh, are you done with YouTube? Have you not making any videos? I'm like, no, it's just I've been filming a whole bunch and I haven't, like, usually I'll, I have two memory cards that are 128 gigabyte cards and I'll fill those up full of footage and then I'll spend a week editing in them. And after I edit them, then you'll, you'll see a rash of videos, a one Thanks, video Mr. a Anderson. day for, you know, a couple of weeks. And that's what happens because I film a bunch one or two weeks and then I edit a whole bunch, you know, and. I like doing it that way. I don't like filming a bunch of stuff that day and then editing that night because it makes my work day, you know, a 15-hour day. So Brian's World of Mechanic. What's up, brother? Glad to have you with us. And um, what was the name of the guy? Well, Chris with Ferrets in Review. What's the, uh, what was the name of the guy that has the Lovely. lift outside? The what? He has a lift outside. A lot of guys have lifts outside. A lot of old shops were built that way where the lifts were outside. They can take it. It's just like a tractor being outside. Well, they can and they can't. The only thing that you have to worry about is like the newer lifts. They have these plastic hydraulic reservoirs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You have to cover those up with something because the plastic will just get destroyed by the UV. Um, the ones I've seen that are outside, if you'll wrap all the hydraulic hoses in some kind of like UV protectant, like a sleeve, or route them to where they're outside of the sun, now the rain's off of them, and then like the actual con uh, power unit itself, if you have a cover over that, those lifts will last outside, you know, uh, longer than you. Jason, ask that question, brother, about the uh, the door, and then um, I can help out. If it's on an automotive door, it shouldn't be an issue. And then um, Ryan's or Todd Todd says, let's see, oh, what's that side? Someone, oh, Cody. Cody's planning on building a shipping container shop. Yeah, man, that's. If I if I pro, like if I were to do it again, I like this construction. But the reason I ordered a bolt together kit and a prefabricated kit was because I wasn't really sure. I wanted it to be right. You know, if you're doing it once, you want it to be right. And I've never built a shop before, so I wanted to see how to do it first. Obviously. Now Stephen's shop, this whole shop's um, about to fall down because of Justin's handiwork. Oh, I'm great. It's great. Well, it is going to fall down because you got to get tightened all the bolts. He's up there. Do we have to put all the bolts in? Yeah, I'll, I think you got to put all the bolts in the main beam. At, at least three quarters. He's no. trying to put one bolt in at a time. Ah, let's save, man. We can we can recycle these. So that, of course, that's not true. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the the if I would have done it differently, I would have welded it together. Just went out and bought all the stuff and welded it. It would be cheaper. And so when Stephen is either going to do a Quonset style, he found a really cool manufacturer that makes these Quonset style, and um, he's either going to do that or we're just going to build his out of raw material more than likely, and because um, it's kind of it's kind of fun. I don't know so, what's going to happen on mine. I was looking for a house, and um, for those of you guys that don't know, I found a house back in February. We put a 60-day closing on it, and then a whole bunch of crap happened, and I didn't get the house. I ended up firing everybody on that side. I had uh, I fired my mortgage broker, so I went with another up, company Bob? for a mortgage, and now since I've had an inquiry in the last 90 days for my mortgage, I couldn't get, I didn't get approved for the next one because too many inquiries and a within a certain amount of time. So now I'm going to have to wait apparently until there's not too many inquiries on my credit in order to get a mortgage. So I have no idea when I'm going to get another house or a house with a shop or build one or whatever. What's up catfish carry. Um, okay. Using Nordlock on the shop. No, no, we're just bolting it up now on a, on a shop like this. It's not necessary. Like if I, if I was building, um, I can tell you if I was building a metal bridge, that was bolted together. I didn't weld it, then I would be using Nord locks on the bridge because of the uh, the twisting and swaying motion. Shops really don't move that much. Hey, Jason, uh, send me an email at thegoodland22.com or goodland22 at gmail.com. And old school repair shop. We'll, uh, we'll go get, back to class. We'll get you, we'll get you set up. All right. Um, Hello, Franz. Hello, Bam. Hello, Emmanuel. Bam Naturalization. That's a heck of a screen name. So yeah, it's um we're getting there. We should have everything tightened up today and leveled, and then we can start putting the roof uh, roof trusses on, or sorry, the roof. Um, you know, the insulation I think is going to be the biggest pain in the butt. It comes in six foot rolls, six foot wide and like fifteen foot long, and you've got to cut it. And you've got to fold the edges over. 
slightest bit of wind, I think is going to make for a huge problem with that. And the insulation is not backed on both sides. It's just backed on one side, and it has a vapor barrier on it. And so that's going to be a bit of fun. I was watching the videos on how to do that, and it, it looks like a little bit of a pain in the butt. So for those of you guys joining us, the actual physical structure is up, which is fantastic. So we've got the structure up. Now we've just got to uh, adjust it, tighten it all down, and lock it in place. So it should be, should be pretty fun. Hey, we finally got 72 people in here. What was your email again? The good of the land 22 at gmail.com. And that's just two, two. So, do right, bam. There you go. I'll put it up there. Yeah, do right's uh, conduit in his shop was um, pretty good, man. He had it. He had everything laid out like you were never. He thought out his electrical system so well that you were never that far away from a plug. So, um, one thing that was very interesting, I wasn't sure how I was going to back the walls, right? So, when you go in the shop, this is the basic structure. So, if you're looking at it from the front, here's your shop walls. Three foot in from this side, a 12 foot by 10 foot garage door, and then about 15 feet over, there is a man door right here, right? So, um, so, and then of course the Eve runs this way, like that, and that's because the sun is right here, and our solar panels are going to run like this. So just stay tuned to the videos, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, uh, you know, stripper pole though. The, 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 the top purlin is eight foot, which is fantastic because I can take literally take an eight foot um, or a two by uh, two by uh, sorry a four by eight sheet of plywood, which I have a ton of five eighths plywood, and I can wrap the entire structure around the inside of the building, and it's going to be awesome. So four by eight, four, four. <laughs> I don't have any figures. Let's we'll see. Machines we're going to have in the shop. Okay, so. We're going to have a uh, 20s Sheldon lathe. Um, we're going to have two or three lathes in the shop. I'm not sure. 16 horsepower Galloway. If I'm going to have the Atlas in there. Yeah, baby. Oh, That's I'm going to do so. Uh, there's going to be something somewhere to where I can hook up a hit and miss engine. So that, that's that, that's an obvious got to happen. So, um, yeah. Um, we're going to have a, uh, we got a mill, a lathe, um, a drill mill, um, big saw, vertical bandsaw or horizontal bandsaw um, and a bunch of small stuff like that. Grinders, belt grinders and all that. And that'll be all set up on tables. I'm almost tempted to do a grinding room like Alex Steele does. It's a really cool idea because when you're grinding and you grind as much as I do, um, you get stuff everywhere, man. And it really does get into your tools. So you really don't want to do a lot of grinding in a machine shop um, or as much as I do because I grind a lot. So I may do that. I may set up a... Um, uh, a grinding room. I think that might be pretty cool. Uh, yes. So once again, the good land 22 at gmail.com, uh, thermal, th the mower medic one. Um, if you want to come out and help out, we got tons of work to do. And after Steven leaves, uh, I'm pretty much a one man show. I think 110 living will come down, um, during the, um, uh, uh, the build process as well as tools for machines, Gary. But other than that, uh, you know, it's just going to be whoever can come out and help. So, uh, hi from the UK, Gordon Farmer. Uh oh, somebody's going to get the. Oh, never mind. <laughs> hey, it's the wacko. Homemade the everything. Homemade everything is here. What's up, brother? Mark, I just noticed that you took your homemade everything sticker off the back of the truck, man. I had a whole skit for that, too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. Yeah, oh well. I'll just have to make one. I Trump like 2020. Oh, we just got demonetized because I said Trump 2020. I read a comment that had Trump in it in a positive light. What's up, dudes? That sticker's been gone for a long time. He says, well, you're going to have to send another one. Do you have do you have stickers? And why are you not a... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to turn you into a moderator. Homemade everything, you're a moderator now. So... Yeah, what's funny about your sticker on that truck, Mark, is I was looking at your one of your dyno vids, the the video you took with the truck on the dyno, and if from an angle you look up, and it looks like if you didn't know any better, it looks like a swastika on the back of your truck, oh. <laughs> because the the sticker is on the window and the bed is kind of covering half the sticker. And I was watching it, and Rachel comes in, and she's like, "Does he have a swastika on the back of his truck?" I was like, "Oh yeah, everybody in that neck of the woods does." You know, it's just. <laughs> 
normal. And I just, I need a haircut. <laughs> I thought she was messing around and I was like, oh, I guess it kind of does. Oh, I'm going to blame your keyboard, huh? What's up, Stephen Lang? Shark River Machine Shop. Uh, going to the Bar Z Summer Bash. Going to hang out with uh, Stephen Lang up there. I'm pretty sure. Wait, or did we decide? Did you say you weren't going this year? I think you said you weren't going, if I remember correctly. Oh, that would be a shame. I'm going, but not with Justin. We're not going to be friends by then. Yeah, it's going to be bad. Homemade everything. You want to jump in a car and go to uh, California with us on a road trip? Next month. When day are we leaving? Wednesday? Drive all day Wednesday. Get remember. a hotel. Drive all day Thursday. Get there it's a Thursday long night. drive. We were going to take the BMW, but now it's having problems again. So we might end up taking the truck. Uh, we got a, Amy has a diesel BMW, and it gets like 45 miles a gallon highway. If you're really nice to it, you can get higher than that. It's insanely good gas mileage. Um, really, really good. I was thinking about buying one of those buyback Volkswagens. They're so cheap now, dude. Yeah. You can get a Golf for like $50. <laughs> um, I really want one. It'd be a great car. <clears throat> what part of Cali? I'm in San Diego. Hey, man. Uh, tickets are still available to Bar Z Summer Bash. Uh, they're Rancho in Ran Cucamundo. Rancho Cucamundo, California. Go to uh, uh, just Google Bar Z Summer Bash. And tons of cool YouTubers there. So. I mean, Stephen and I will be there, and there's just there's so many more. I mean, the list is outrageous. Um, a bomb seventy nine, Keith Finner, Keith Rucker, uh, he, Tools for Machines will be there. Just a ton of guys. You, you got to go check it out. So, and my goal is to go out there and then I get picked up by a talent agency and become a movie actor. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's exactly how it happens. I mean, you just walk around California, and somebody's like, "Hey, you look like a movie star." You uh, you are a movie star. Mm. That's the end of the coffee. Yeah, it is. Uh, maybe we should just grab the computer and walk him up to the top of the shop and show him the show him the we can. progress. Or we can jump in the wheeler. Hey guys, y'all want to see the shop? Um, it's about a mile up the hill. Let's get set up and prepared. We're just going to take you and keep you live with us. Uh, video. Bye -bye. Possibly. Gotta make fun of my words. All right, guys. So those of you just joining us, we're just going to run up the hill with you guys. Get the Wi-Fi. Oh, you want to see the tiny house from the outside? There's our sweet mini split system. We're going to be installing that Mr. Cool mini split. There's the back patio. And um, this is I just kind of lined the four wheelers up here. And there's the... Um, the uh, can am, which has been fantastic having. All right, Stevie. You got the wiki? Yeah. That tip did kind of drive, drive down the little road in the back, show them how pretty that part is. All woods out here, guys. All right, we're here. All right, Stephen. I'm going to let you kind of narrate. Oh, you want me to narrate? Yeah. All right. So what we got here is we got a metal shop that's about this tall and wider than my arms. And it's on some hard concrete. And there's bolts and stuff that bolts it to the ground. <laughs> and it's really, really stable. See, watch. Actually, it, it didn't move. I'm shocked. See, it doesn't we, even move. We put some braces in. <laughs> it did good. Uh, it's a 30 by 40 metal, metal building kit from Euler Metal Buildings. Uh... Kit came out pretty decent, but their plans, their, their blue plants are, are somewhat lacking as far as um, when you actually take the time to read the instructions, you kind of want to have like a step-by-step -step like, hey, start here. And they don't give you that. It's just like, here's the blueprints. You figure it out. Um, when we put it together, none of the bolts in this entire thing are tight. We left all of them loose because when you're putting these purlins in and you need to line the holes and everything, 
if you don't, if you start tightening one and you get off a little bit, by the time you get to the other side, you are really trying to force things to work and you're really trying to force things to line up. So everything is loose right now. We just got all of the bracing, all the clips, everything together. Now we need to come back through. We're going to put a level on these, make sure these beams are actually uh, level or upright level. And then we're going to tighten these bolts to hold those. And we'll go through and tighten the rest of all the bolts. So look down here at this concrete pad. All the metal sits right inside here. And then this is our doorway. And that's another thing. We ordered a door and they didn't pre-cut any of the steel for the door. I didn't like that. That was a little bit annoying. So we have to field cut that. Now, that wouldn't be that big of a deal, but this is eight foot, not seven foot. So we have to build a header over the top of this as well. And because um, this beam right here is a foot higher than the door. So that's a little annoying, but we'll come over here. This is the roll up door area. And uh, this gives you an idea. Now, when I was talking about a run up, that's the run up right there. And it actually comes back to about right here, but it's covered with dirt right now to protect the concrete edge because I don't have gravel out here yet. But yeah, she's pretty good size. Milo, what's up, buddy? So here's another thing. I got a video coming out on this. Um, this basket, you can pick these up for next to nothing. It's a perfect yeah, man these basket. Are, uh, these are on uh, Amazon. It'll be a link in the description. <laughs> it's a Centrax 3200 man basket. <laughs> We'll sell them to you for $6.99. So I finally got the Mahindra back. And uh, let's see, you guys still with me? Can you hear us? So we finally got the Mahindra back, and um, it's nice to have it back. It is operating. So check this out, guys. The problem with this tractor, since I got it, was that it had some crap in the gas tank, in the fuel tank, the diesel tank. And um, it was like a mold, essentially. And it started acting up three weeks after I got the got the sucker. So it's been in there since the beginning. But anyway, Mahindra helped out. They took care of some of that bill, um, which was kind of nice. But a it'd be great if you actually had like they did enough, like, I guess. Mechanic that you knew. Yeah. Well, we all, we went through it. And here's the, here's the problem. Stuff. It's given all these crazy codes that everybody has a problem with on this. Well, it was it's very rare that if you have the codes and it's a common problem that i mean even the it's been to like four mechanics now to fix the problem and it was never the problem because they all tried to reflash the computer and i even said the computer needed to be reflashed well that wasn't it it was a filter inside the tank and the funny thing is not even the mechanics that were at mahindra knew that there was a filter inside the tank so it's kind of weird one of them stumbled on it and i'm really glad he did so that was pretty cool that was asco asco was the only place that actually figured it out so uh, makes me happy. She's running great now, and I think I've, I think I finally have. After 200 hours of this thing running like crap, I finally have a good tractor, and it was for something so simple that any one of us should have figured out to begin with. The problem with it was, is I would go in and I would change the fuel filter, the auxiliary fuel filter. Let me show you. Uh, so I do all this on this myself. So you come in here change the fuel filter and there's plenty of fuel that will leak out of this but it's this pet cock that's right up inside here and that pet cock up inside that pet cock there's actually a filter so anyway so yeah here's uh here's the backdrop to the shop and you can see just the insane amount of trees and how pretty it is out here we've got a couple burn piles right here i was telling you guys about a connex shop um, or the, the two Connex boxes and then a roof with a slab under it, um, just like Andrew Camaradas, that's going to go right here, and that will give us storage for all of my equipment. When we moved out to this property, um, it was we, we, we paid nothing for this, guys. We 20 acres on a lake, valued raw property alone, valued at somewhere like $220,000. We got it for seventy five. dollars because it was just a mess. I'm gonna turn this around. I haven't had my tractor. I wanted to have this out for the shop build, but that is all the debris from all over the property that was left here by the people who previously owned the property. So that's the last of it. We'll haul that stuff off and it'll be good to go. What you doing, Steve? Um, it's over here. Oh, I a quarter. It's over here somewhere. Whatever we did with it. It's here. I know it's out. 
Right there. That's not it. It's for the rest of them. Oh, you're looking for the one for the for the big bolts? Yeah, for the feet. They're not answering a quarter. Uh, it's the black socket. Here it is. This, the brand new one we just bought, is not it? That's for the, uh, oh, yeah, that's for the top. Too big. What do we want to call this live stream? Or do we just want to set this on your truck real quick? Uh, let's go ahead and call it. We put it working. All right, guys. Get out and fix something. Yeah, now. <laughs> let's, see if we have, let's see if we have any more questions before we leave. It's kind of hard to see here, guys. Let me see. Yeah, I can't even read. Um, I can't read your comments because the sun is too bright behind me. So, all right. So, um, I should have the first video out probably tomorrow or the next day of the build. So, you guys will be able to see kind of the progress. We don't really go into details on how to build it. Um, it's more just like watching us do the work. And, uh, and we'll make a few key comments along the way. But, um, yeah, thank you guys for... For being here, it's nice to see 91 people in my stream now as opposed to the 45 40. I've been getting because YouTube is just not sending my information out to people. But um, we we had someone get on the channel the other day and say, holy crap, you are making videos. I thought you just quit because YouTube never tells me that uh, that you're coming, that uh, your videos are out. So anyway, um, we'll get back to putting those videos out every other day. And that should uh, light a fire onto YouTube to present our videos. And we're going to have way better content for you guys. So, super exciting. Um, let me show you my my situation right now. There's all those tools over there. You guys want to see what's going in the shop? Let me take you over there. So, and I've got to get everything coated with SP400, but um, there's my brake, there's my roller, there's the Sheldon lathe, there's uh, all of my CRC products, there's my press, all this stuff is going to get redone, nice drill, and um, that cold saw over there is just awesome. There's my shaper, there's my Norton grinder. And my drill mill. There's the head to my sawmill right there, which we'll be getting that up and running soon because I need some wood. So she's just been sitting out here. And that's about it. All right, guys. I'm going to sign off. I can't do my normal sign off where I uh, say all your names and give you shout outs, but uh, it's coming. It's awesome. I'm super excited. <laughs> Let's see. can't see how to end the stream. <laughs> we, may, we may just end up leaving it on. Let me go to some shade. <laughs> I'll leave it up. Who cares? What do you think about that little coal, Steve? Not pretty good. Not bad, huh?
tight. Okay. Now we need to make sure. Um, which corner do we want to start with? That one. I think if we start on this wall over here, that that one's easier to level out than this one. Or do you want to start with a harder one? You call it. Start on this wall. This one? Yep. That's like a pie. It's like it's been impactinated. What are you doing, Milo? Yeah, run! Okay, so each one of these has four bolts on the bottom. Okay, so what Steven just did was he locked in the flange to the concrete. And then we have those flanges sandwich either side, or some of them are only on one side, and they go like this. But they have four bolts in them. And we're going to loosen those, adjust the beams on one side, get it all squared up. And just the action of doing that should actually help to square the rest of it. But we've got a lot of play there. So those bolts right down here at the bottom, right there, we're going to crack those loose. We'll start at one corner and then just start plumbing and, and uh, leveling out the structure. You want to start middle? Yeah. I pull the uh, side by side over here. We're going to get the side by side, pull it inside, and use the winch cable to put a little pressure on that, pull it in. We'll just uh, hook it up to the top and give it a slight tug, level it out, and then zip the screws in. Got it right the first time.
swap over to you. Because it's gonna get. Um, I think a lot of it's going to be, let's get the other side and then see what that looks like. Yeah. 
It's lost, dude. What's up, everybody? Fall, 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 fall. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. It's better than an Amish barn raising. Ah, thank you. I couldn't figure that out. It wouldn't work. <laughs> All right, where you at, Stephen? I think we're set up right. I'll try right up there. Uh, I swore we brought it. guys turned around over here hey from ireland sam steve b what happened to the focus 
I mean, like, is it out of focus? Maybe that'll clear you guys up a little bit. I'm excited to see your new shop, man. It's been a long time in the making. So here we go. That'll get you lined up, guys. Watch your fingers right in the middle, there's a staff. Oh, no, no, no. I need a nut. All right, let me grab it. Doesn't make any sense for that Wi Fi deal all set. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find it somewhere. snap on bad boy.
Way to go. Just drop my sockets. So negative. I'm so negative all the time. <sighs> sockets are made for dropping. <laughs> We set my camera over there on my truck. On these, make sure that clip is lined up with that other outside purlin. Some ear plugs. Yep. Living hooked us up with some ear plugs. I don't know if one ten is in here right now. No, I said he had to go do a delivery. Okay, so he works at Fast and All. And um, he's been a great help out here. Such a positive guy, too, you know? Oh, yeah. I really hope his channel takes off. So, all right. Oh, these are great earplugs. Hang on for you starting with your laptop right on the off. Tighten the center. Uh, Did you tighten the center one?
we got to find out a Wi-Fi box. Okay. We're losing signal. All Oh, Steven. Way to go, Steven. <laughs> Happy with that boss bulldog. Worked well.
second level? Yep, did we get these ones? Yeah, we did, huh? Yeah. Yep, second level. You want to do that in the tractor and drive it around? Uh, I can probably reach them all. Oh, okay. If you can reach them. All right, let's see. There's still 42 people in here. There's a bee in my room. Your Wi-Fi is still plugged in on the Can-Am. <laughs> this is from Thailand. Quality of Life, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys, go check out Quality of Life's channel. Go click on that. He's building a house right now, and uh, he's got a sawmill. He's doing everything by himself. It's incredible. Um, Simone Murray, what are they up to? Well, if you look around, it's shop build day. And uh, everyone needs a tall friend. <laughs> Saves on ladders. You are correct. Yeah, Steven's got me by. There's our actual height comparison right there with matching hats. My hat's a little high, though. There we go. That's normal. <laughs> he about half a head higher, but his arms. Show me your arms. What's your reach difference? Oh, uh, let me take this back. Let's see. There we go. I yeah, think you got me there. <laughs> I win. He wins. He wins at everything. All right. So we're to the final stage, guys. For those of you that have just joined us, we're to the final stage of uh, buttoning everything up. We started this live stream on the porch, and then we're like, well, let's go show them the shop. As soon as we got out here, we were like, well, we might as well go to work, so <laughs> let's do it. Threw our earplugs in and started tightening up and bolts. We left the live stream running. It's been running for an hour and 12 minutes so far, so it's good. It's keeping us on our toes, keeping us working. So that's nice. And uh, thank God Steven's tall enough to reach all these. So... Let me see if I can give you kind of a corner to corner shot here. So there's the shop size. Really, really tall ceilings. I'm really happy. 14 in the middle. It's like 13 and a half. 13, 13, you know, somewhere in there. And uh, 12 foot sidewalls. So the lowest point inside the shop is actually that center beam right there. That's going to be the lowest point. And um, it's, it's pretty high up there. So it's way higher than I expected. Makes me super happy, so that's cool. And then, of course, we have a run-up. So what's going to happen as you drive into the shop, you can also work on stuff out there, and I'm going to put an awning over that. So that's 20 foot long and 12 foot wide, so plenty wide enough to work on anything. That's where I've been doing all of my maintenance and stuff on equipment. Oh, it looks like Steven's having to reach. Did we get our clips on the second stage? What? Did we put our clips on the second stage? Yeah, it's on there. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. So this building came from Euler. It is a custom design building for my specifications. So it has a... Well, they didn't put the man door cutouts in. I got to do that myself. One big bay door right here. This is a 12-foot... Uh, 10 foot tall by 12 foot wide and um, totally big enough. There's my tractor. Easily fit that through here so we can get big equipment in here. That's important. The slab is four and a half foot. 
uh, sorry, four, four inches at its low, at its highest, its thinnest is four inches. Um, there are spots in here that are in the six inch range. And a lot of it is, I'm going to say the average depth of the, of the slab is five inches and I'm um, really, really tough. And then we have a nice big perimeter beam and uh, that helps out a lot. So while he's setting that up, I'm going to set you guys down. I'm going to go get the tractor and load up all the tools that we require for the top. We have a couple different bolt sizes up there, and um, we're going to be running the tractor around the inside. With uh, I'll probably jump in the bucket and get up there and do the top. So about getting you guys about right there. That'll give you. Let's see. That'll give you the full view of everything we're doing. Hey, Steve, where are your batteries? Top drawer.
the live stream? Huh? We're still on live stream? Yeah, we can kill it anytime you want. Because a lot of young scientists that were still on live stream. You can kill it in 30 years. Okay, come on, in, come on over. Let's say our goodbyes. All right, guys, 41 of you here watching this fun build. We're going to go ahead and shut it down right now, and we're going to come back over to Steven's channel. He has a Skype call at 12. Right now, our time, it's 11 o'clock, so in an hour, he's going to have a Skype call. Right after that, we're going to come back, and we're going to hit live again on Stephen Cox's channel. So get over to Stephen Cox's channel and uh, watch us live. All right? It's pretty simple. Stephen Cox, P-H, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. All right, guys. We're going to end the stream now. Quality of life. Take it easy, brother. Uh, BSS Small Engines is here. Fix it, restore it. Simone and Beck, hello. All right. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you guys in an hour. Not yet. Are you sure? Are you sure? Not yet. End. End.